Hi everybody, this is Alex Ducellier Muller and welcome to Dressage Schooling Exercises. Um, sorry, it's been a while. I've been building a facility and um, got a little bit sidetracked, but I'm back on track now. This is episode 11, Improving Connection in the Trot. And for this episode, I'm writing Marius. Um, Marius is now six years old. He's a thoroughbred. I've ridden him once before, and I talked to you all about how he has a little bit of a problem where he wants to be short in the neck, curled and behind the vertical. Hopefully you will find that that's improved. I do feel it has improved. Uh, obviously it's not completely better as with all things, it takes some time, but um, I do think it's has, it has improved. He's reaching out better to the bridle, um, a little bit more even in the contact, uh, more through his back. So in this episode today, you will see I'm, I'm riding a leg yield. I've already kind of started the exercise here. I'm riding a leg yield from the rail to the center line and then a half 10 meter circle the opposite direction to a lengthen and then a transition back. So I'll talk you through that one more time here. I'm going to leg yield away from the left leg. So here you'll see me change my posting diagonal. Leg yield from the left leg to the center line. And then do a half 10 meter circle to the right to a lengthen across the short diagonal and a transition back. So what I'm hoping to do with this exercise is to start to increase Marius's throughness. He gets fixed in the neck and doesn't push all the way into the bridle and then gets a little bit reactive to the leg. So you'll see several times here, he'll kind of start at my leg and I'll have to slow him down and get him to accept the leg again. Um, obviously his leg yields are not perfect, but the idea behind the leg yield is to get his inside hind leg engaged and then the turn the opposite direction is to stack up his outside shoulder into the length in which he's just starting we barely started the length in, so i'm trying to get him to lengthen his top line as well as his stride and then a clear transition back so even if we don't get much length in, i do want to put a very clear transition back so as we leg yield, trying to think about his chest staying straight and parallel towards the short end, engaging his inside hind and keeping the trot rhythm clear. I forgot which way I was going there, sorry. We're gonna go do the same direction again, apparently. So in the length, then I wanna see him take a longer step. I'm trying to influence his neck down like a waterfall out of his withers trying to post very clearly to keep his tempo the same. And then when I go leg yield, I really want to see the stride stay the same in the leg yield. A lot of times people try and influence the trot too much and the trot gets really choppy in the leg yield. That was actually pretty good there. So I'm kind of liking what's happening to the trot obviously with this kind of squirrely elastic dude everything is a bit fleeting nothing's perfect for long but I am seeing glimpses here where he's starting to reach more out to the bridle and then this is his harder way for the leg yield so you'll see as I start the leg yield he doesn't really accept my right leg and engage his right hind but that got better there so I'm still thinking about his chest staying parallel to the short end I actually quite like the second half of that. And then I want his neck to be low, so I'm working on that here. There, he drops the neck a little bit and I push him into the length then. And then as he's losing his balance, I do a clear transition back. I think right there I felt him lean on the left shoulder, so I stacked him up and did a little bit of a square corner there. So overall, I'm liking this. Um, Obviously, he could be more out to the bridle, but as we know, that's his struggle. I do like that he's starting to touch the bit. He's starting to get a little bit more solid in the connection. I don't love the straightness. Uh, you can see his hips go right here in the lengthen, and that's always been his weakness. 
I believe at this point I move on to another exercise. So we're going to keep watching. And this is a bit of a glimpse into how I do my rides. I, I do exercises, but I don't stick to them for a tremendously long time. So I'll ride through three or four times and then do something to evaluate the success and maybe move on to another exercise. So here I'm offering him a stretch. As we know, a stretch is a test of the connection, the horse's desire to reach for the bridle. And it's not fantastic here. He's stretching somewhat, but he's not really going down to the bit the way I would want him to. So I give him a chance to stretch both directions. And then I believe I moved on to some transitions. So as you'll remember, if you watched his last video, he is quite green with the canter transitions. Last time I think we were still struggling with leads and he was a bit leaping into the transitions. At this point his leads are much more solid but he's still not in the connection in the transitions and I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried right now that he accepts my leg that I can close my calf and prepare him for the transitions rather than him reacting too much when I try to set him up. So I did a halt there because he just felt like he was running on his forehand a bit. And you can see that was just a little unclear. I think this actually was his first scanner transition of the day, so I won't be too hard on him. And so in this ride, I'm, I'm still trying to think about him going more to the bit. So I push him out in front of me. I like in the canter length and that he takes the bit more. Um, that makes me quite happy. And so I've been starting to play with some lengthening and shortening, not only in the trot, but in the canter. And then some of the first level movements. So here the counter canter loop to make him start to sit on the left hind. And that was kind of cool. You could actually kind of see his left hind bend there as we went into that loop. So I think the connection is a bit better after that first canter. Um, obviously he's never going to be a heavy horse, but I do like that it looks like he's touching the bridle more here. Um, the tempo is a tiny bit quick, but I like that he's going out to the bit more after the canter. So I'm fairly pleased with that. So that looks more solid to me. I'm still running just a little bit into that connection, um, into that transition. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not too stressed about that. I really just want him to accept the leg. Yeah, I like that trot better there. He looks more solid. I would love for him to be even more solid, but um, I take what little improvement I can get. So for a show, I would slow this tempo a little bit. But in schooling, I'm really trying to get him to push forward to the bridle. So that hollowing really does not bother me at this phase. Um, a lot of people clinic with me and they will complain a lot about their canter transitions um, and they want to fix those like right now but really the the canter transition for a lot of horses is just a symptom of the overall connection so uh, that's a better trot there so if they're not connected that's better if they're not connected overall like really really through their back and into the bridle and in front of your leg the canter transition is going to show that so um, I don't stress about the transition itself until the connection issues are fixed. There, I think you can see him take the bit a little bit more. I asked him for a little bit of a lengthen. He fell just a little bit on his forehand, but he's been quite responsive with the transitions back, which I love. Um, I think teaching the horse the half halt within that lengthen to shorten in the trot is super, super important so that you can put your leg on later and they understand that it means not to run. Okay. 
So obviously he's not a finished product, but I think you can see how the transitions combined with the leg yields we did earlier, we're starting to get him a little bit more solid in the connection. So uh, yeah, here I offer him a stretch. Again, testing the connection. Um, and I do like that better. So here after the canner, he's um, not consistent, but much more willing to reach down. Like that's a little bit more through his back than the stretch I had earlier. And he just looks a little bit less fixed. That's quite nice. I like that for a few steps. He looks a little bit less fixed in his neck. And so I just go play with the halts. Um, I do always add in halts on a straight line in all of my rides. I just think it's something that people don't practice enough. Um, and when I quit practicing them, it shows in, in the test. Um, at this phase in his training, I'm not asking for his halts to be square by any means. I just want him to halt in balance, so without bracing into my hand. And I actually probably should be holding those halts a little bit longer. He's not one to fidget when he halts, so I think I got a little bit lazy about holding the halts, but really I should be holding them for five or more seconds. So I like that he's rideable into that. He's, he's letting me keep my leg on him. We had a little miscommunication, but he's trying really hard to step up and under. Good boy. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, thank you guys, and I will see you next time.